Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism and Hertz experiments on the generation and detection of electromagnetic waves in 1887 strongly established the wave nature of light. Towards the same period at the end of 19th century, experimental investigations on conduction of electricity through gases at low pressure in a discharge tube led to many historic discoveries. The discovery of X-rays by Röntgen in 1895, and of Electron by J.J. Thomson in 1897, were important milestones in the understanding of atomic structure. Around the same time, in 1887, it was found that certain metals, when irradiated by ultraviolet light, emitted negatively charged particles having small speeds. Also, certain metals when heated to a high temperature were found to emit negatively charged particles. The value of charge to mass ratio of these particles was found to be the same as that for cathode ray particles. These observations thus established that all these particles, although produced under different conditions, were identical in nature. J.J. Thomson, in 1897, named these particles as electrons, and suggested that they were fundamental, universal constituents of matter. For his epoch-making discovery of electron, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1906. The free electrons in metals, cannot normally escape out of the metal surface. If an electron attempts to come out of the metal, the metal surface acquires a positive charge and pulls the electron back to the metal. The free electron is thus held inside the metal surface by the attractive forces of the ions. Consequently, the electron can come out of the metal surface only if it has got sufficient energy to overcome the attractive pull. A certain minimum amount of energy is required to be given to an electron to pull it out from the surface of the metal. This minimum energy required by an electron to escape from the metal surface is called the work function of the metal. The photoelectric effect was first observed by Heinrich Hertz in 1887. He noticed that a spark would jump more easily between two spheres when their surfaces were illuminated by light from another spark. When a metallic surface is illuminated by light of the appropriate wavelength, electrons are emitted from the surface. This phenomenon is known as photoelectric effect. It was investigated in detail by Holwachs and Leonard in the following years. The photoelectric effect, which is the emission of electricity from metals due to incident electromagnetic radiation, was first investigated in detail by Holwachs and Leonard. The explanation of these experimental results came only after Max Planck proposed the quantum theory of radiation. Holwachs connected a negatively charged zinc plate to an electroscope. He observed that the zinc plate lost its charge when it was illuminated by ultraviolet light. Further, the uncharged zinc plate became positively charged when it was irradiated by ultraviolet light. Positive charge on a positively charged zinc plate was found to be further enhanced when it was illuminated by ultraviolet light. From these observations, he concluded that negatively charged particles were emitted from the zinc plate under the action of ultraviolet light. After the discovery of the electron, it became evident that the incident light causes electrons to be emitted from the emitter plate. Holwachs and Leonard also observed that when ultraviolet light fell on the emitter plate, no electrons were emitted at all when the frequency of the incident light was smaller than a certain minimum value, called the threshold frequency. This minimum frequency depends on the nature of the material of the emitter plate. Experimental arrangement consists of an evacuated glass or quartz tube having a photosensitive plate C, and another metal plate A monochromatic light from the source, S, of sufficiently short wavelength passes through the window W and falls on the photosensitive plate C, that is emitter. A transparent quartz window is sealed onto the glass tube, which permits ultraviolet radiation to pass through it and irradiate the photosensitive plate, C. The electrons are emitted by the plate, C, and are collected by the plate, A, that is collector, by the electric field created by the battery. The battery maintains the potential difference between the plates C and A, that can be varied. The polarity of the plates C and A, can be reversed by a commutator. Thus, the plate A, can be maintained at a desired positive or negative potential with respect to emitter C. When the collector plate, A, is positive with respect to the emitter plate C, the electrons are attracted to it. The emission of electrons causes flow of electric current in the circuit. Keeping the frequency of the incident radiation and the accelerating potential fixed, the intensity of light is varied and the resulting photoelectric current is measured each time. It is found that the photocurrent increases linearly with intensity of incident light as shown graphically in figure. The photocurrent is directly proportional to the number of photoelectrons emitted per second. This implies that the number of photoelectrons emitted per second is directly proportional to the intensity of incident radiation. We first keep the plate, A, at some positive accelerating potential with respect to the plate, C, and illuminate the plate, C with light of fixed frequency and fixed intensity, I1. 
we next varied the positive potential of plate, a gradually and measured the resulting photocurrent each time. It is found that the photoelectric current increases with increase in accelerating potential. At some stage, for a certain positive potential of plate, A, all the emitted electrons are collected by the plate A and the photoelectric current becomes maximum or saturates. If we increase the accelerating potential of plate, A further, the photocurrent does not increase. This maximum value of the photoelectric current is called saturation current. Saturation current corresponds to the case when all the photoelectrons emitted by the emitter plate, C reach the collector plate, A. We now apply a negative potential to the plate, A with respect to the plate, C and make it increasingly negative gradually. When the polarity is reversed, the electrons are repelled and only the most energetic electrons are able to reach the collector A. The photocurrent is found to decrease rapidly until it drops to zero at a certain sharply defined critical value of the negative potential V not on the plate, A for a particular frequency of incident radiation, the minimum negative, that is retarding, potential V not given to the plate, A for which the photocurrent stops or becomes zero is called the cutoff or stopping potential. Clearly, all the photoelectrons emitted from the metal do not have the same energy. Photoelectric current is zero when the stopping potential is sufficient to repel even the most energetic photoelectrons, with the maximum kinetic energy, so that maximum kinetic energy is equal to product of E and V not. We can now repeat this experiment with incident radiation of the same frequency but of higher intensity. We note that the saturation currents are now found to be at higher values. This shows that more electrons are being emitted per second, proportional to the intensity of incident radiation. But the stopping potential remains the same as that for the incident radiation of intensity, as shown graphically in figure. Thus, for a given frequency of the incident radiation, the stopping potential is independent of its intensity. In other words, the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons depends on the light source and the emitter plate material, but is independent of intensity of incident radiation. We now study the relation between the frequency of the incident radiation and the stopping potential. We suitably adjust the same intensity of light radiation at various frequencies and study the variation of photocurrent with collector plate potential. The resulting variation is shown in figure. We obtain different values of stopping potential but the same value of the saturation current for incident radiation of different frequencies. The energy of the emitted electrons depends on the frequency of the incident radiations. The stopping potential is more negative for higher frequencies of incident radiation. Note from greater the frequency of incident light, greater is the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. As discussed, greater the frequency of incident light, greater is the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. Consequently, we need greater retarding potential to stop them completely. If we plot a graph between the frequency of incident radiation and the corresponding stopping potential for different metals, we get a straight line, as shown in the figure. It shows that there is a minimum value of frequency called threshold frequency below which photoelectric emission is not possible however high the intensity of incident light may be. It depends on the nature of the metal emitting photoelectrons. Note that, in all the experiments, it is found that, if frequency of the incident radiation exceeds the threshold frequency, the photoelectric emission starts instantaneously, without any apparent time lag, even if the incident radiation is very dim. It is now known that, emission starts in a time of the order of 10 to the power minus 9 seconds or less. We now summarize the experimental features and observations described in this section, known as laws of photoelectric effect. First, for a given photosensitive material, and frequency of incident radiation, above the threshold frequency, the photoelectric current is directly proportional to the intensity of incident light. Second, for a given photosensitive material, and frequency of incident radiation, saturation current is found to be proportional to the intensity of incident radiation, whereas the stopping potential is independent of its intensity. Third, for a given photosensitive material, there exists a certain minimum cutoff frequency of the incident radiation, called the threshold frequency, below which no emission of photoelectrons takes place, no matter how intense the incident light is. Above the threshold frequency, the stopping potential, or equivalently the maximum kinetic energy, of the emitted photoelectrons, increases linearly with the frequency of the incident radiation, but is independent of its intensity. Next, the photoelectric emission is an instantaneous process without any apparent time lag that is 10 to the power minus 9 seconds or less even when the incident radiation is made exceedingly dim.